Can the J-20's radar really see through 1,000 kilometers? Behind the myths surrounding silicon carbide radar, the truth needs to be peeled off with a cool technical scalpel. Recently, part of the media has been speculating that J-20 is equipped with silicon carbide radar with a detection distance of 1,000 kilometers, which has been verified by the serious technical traceability in the industry and found that there are quite serious factual deviations and conceptual confusion. The core problem of this seemingly exciting breakthrough is precisely the misperception of the role of basic materials and excessive challenges to the laws of physics. Let's cut through the fog and look at the real path and hard boundaries of radar upgrades for modern top fighters. First of all, it is important to clarify a basic fact. Silicon carbide is by no means the T, our component of the radar itself, but plays a critical but fundamental supporting role, the base material. This is like the foundation of a 10,000-foot building, which is critical but not the floor structure that determines the height of the building. The art and performance of a modern airborne active phased array radar is determined by the T, our assembly. These tiny but powerful units are responsible for transmitting and receiving signals, and the characteristics of their semiconductor materials directly determine the radar's power, efficiency, frequency and other core performance indicators. The current mainstream and fully engineered technology path is very clear. Early J-20 is equipped with radar based on the second generation of semiconductor materials gallium arsenide, and the current stage of J-20 radar upgrade is the main direction of the third generation of semiconductors with better performance gallium nitride. The industry's recognized direction of development of the next generation of the fourth generation of semiconductors pointing to the potential of the great potential of gallium oxide rather than silicon carbide. So where is the value of silicon carbide? It is mainly used as a substrate material for gallium nitride chips or in the manufacture of high-voltage switching devices and radar systems. Its core contribution lies in its excellent thermal conductivity and high dielectric strength, which can effectively improve the voltage resistance of circuits carrying GAN chips and solve the thorny problem of heat dissipation at high power densities imagine it as a more efficient water cooling system for high performance engines. As for the ultimate solution to radar's future heat dissipation needs, materials scientists are more optimistic about diamond substrate technology with higher thermal conductivity, although it is still in the laboratory or costly stage. Calling a radar that uses silicon carbide as a substrate or switching device Silicon carbide radar is like calling a cell phone with a lithium battery, lithium cell phone, which deliberately blurs or even ignores the existence of the processor, which really determines the core performance of the device. It is a typical generalization that misleadingly elevates the technical status of silicon carbide. Secondly, the staggering 1,000 kilometer detection range is a serious deviation from the basic laws of physics and the limits of current engineering technology. According to the domestic and foreign public authority radar performance data, combined with the classical radar equation and electromagnetic wave propagation in the atmosphere of the attenuation model, we can make a relatively objective projection. Assuming that the baseline value of the detection range of the early J-20 radar equipped with GOSS-T our components for typical air targets is around 270 kilometers. When upgraded to the more powerful GAN T, our components, the radar's detection range is expected to see a significant increase of about 50% minus 100%, thanks to the significant advantages of GAN materials in terms of power density, efficiency, and high temperature resistance. This means that its reasonable detection range should fall in the range of 400 kilometers to 500 kilometers. In the future, if the J-20 model or the new generation of J-35 fighters are equipped with T, our components with larger apertures and using the fourth generation semiconductor gallium oxide with real intergenerational advantages, the theoretical detection range limit is expected to be close to 800 kilometers, which is the ceiling that can be reached by the current materials science and engineering capabilities. Where, then, did the shocking figure of 1,000 kilometers come from? The root cause is locked in a serious misinterpretation of academic papers. The claim mainly stems from the misinterpretation of a paper on the application of silicon carbide materials from Shandong University. In the paper, it is clearly pointed out that after optimizing the technology of silicon carbide substrate, the effective detection range of the radar system is expected to be expanded to three times of the original one. This, three times, refers to the area, but it has been intentionally or unintentionally switched by some media or information disseminators, 
wrongly interpreted as a three times increase in detection range. This is a fundamental calculation error. According to geometric principles, the area of a circle is proportional to the square of its radius. Therefore, a threefold increase in the detection area corresponds to a threefold increase in the detection distance, which should be the square root of the square root, i.e., 3 approximately equal 1.7 times. Calculating with the original detection distance of 300 kilometers, the optimized distance is about 500 kilometers. To force a threefold increase in detection range, according to the radar equation, the required transmit power would need to be increased to 3 to the power of 3 equals 27 times the original. This is not only far beyond the energy available from any existing aerospace platform, it is a complete reversal of the physical limits of currently known materials, and falls into the realm of pure science fiction. The reason why silicon carbide is mistakenly touted by some voices as black technology stems largely from another conceptual confusion. Silicon carbide breakdown electric field strength is indeed about 10 times that of traditional silicon materials, which is indeed a huge progress. However, the key is, as a representative of the third generation of semiconductors, gallium nitride, its breakdown electric field strength also reached about 3 mV, cm level, and silicon carbide at the same level. Certain expressions claim that, Silicon carbide performance exceeds gallium nitride by 10 times, which is actually the result of comparing silicon carbide with the most primitive silicon material, but deliberately not mentioning the existence of gallium nitride, which is a typical conceptual substitution and selective comparison. In the core battlefield of radar T, our components, silicon carbide itself does not have the qualification to replace gallium nitride or gallium oxide as the material of the launch unit, which is always an excellent supporting role, a reliable high voltage switch, or a highly efficient heat dissipation substrate. J-20 is the pinnacle of China's aviation industry. The upgrade of its radar system will inevitably follow a rigorous and clear technology roadmap from the initial gallium arsenide, steadily upgraded to the current enhancement of the comprehensive performance of gallium nitride, and forward-looking layout of the fourth-generation semiconductor gallium oxide has the potential for intergenerational breakthroughs. Silicon carbide materials in which the role play cannot be ignored as a high-quality substrate and high-voltage switching materials. It is to enhance the power capacity and reliability of gallium nitride components to solve the thermal bottleneck made an important contribution to support the progress of the system behind the scenes. However, to label it as silicon carbide radar and derive the myth of detection distance of 1,000 kilometers from it is not only a deviation from the basic principles of material science, but also an indifference to the reality of complex systems engineering. A real technological revolution is always based on solid basic research, rigorous engineering practice and verified data, not on exaggerated narratives divorced from reality. The evolution path of J-20 radar is the best depiction of this pragmatic truth-seeking.